كتب الآثار ونسخ الآجال القلوب عنده مفطية والسر عنده علانية الحلال ما أحلل والحرام ما حرم والدين ما شرع والأمر ما قضى وهو الله الرؤوف الرحيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سجدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الظل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا وقال جل وعلا وأمر أهلك بالصلاة واستبر عليها لا نسألك رزقا نحن نرزقك والعاقبة للتقوى وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما نحل والد ولدا أفضل من أدب حسن أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful I beg for his mercy I ask Allah to enlighten our life I ask Allah to guide us in the path which is most beloved to him. And I ask Allah to send salutations upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. And I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah, the Almighty, who has given us this blessed day of Jum'ah. And as we are concluding and commencing the month of Rajab and the month of Sha'ban, it's the next month which gives us only a month away from the month of Ramadan. I would like to take this moment to reflect on few aspects. Number one, the preparation and the actions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he did in the month of Sha'ban to prepare himself for the month of Ramadan. Number two, as we know that the month of May and the first weekend, a full weekend of the month commences through Mother's Day as we walk into the markets grocery stores, malls, we see different sales, different advertisements, encouragement for buying a gift for your mother and buying something and gifting them flowers and deals all over different stores and different uh, malls. So that reminds us, you know, of course, this weekend, this Sunday is the Mother's Day, so buy or buy something for my mom. So I would like to reflect on that aspect. And the third reflection that I would like to talk about in today's khutbah, which is connected with the second one, that the responsibilities that Allah has given and the relationships that Allah has given to each other, how to maintain according to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So beginning with the first point, Usama bin Zayd radiallahu anhu mentions, once I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said, O Prophet of Allah, I see you in the month of Sha'ban that you fast so much that you, other than the month of Ramadan, I don't see you fasting as much as I see you fasting in the month of Sha'ban. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ذَاكَ the month of Sha'ban is a month which comes before, which comes between Rajab and, Ma- and Ramadan. And that's the month which majority of the people are not uh, reminded of its significance. And in this month, there are certain things that Allah decides for every individual. And His actions have been decided and has been marked 
for the whole year and the actions that he has committed or he had did in the past are also looked upon in this month so when my actions are being presented in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, I want those actions to be presented in a stage while I'm fasting. And in another hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu anha mentions this hadith. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would fast almost the whole month of Sha'ban. Why? Because he wanted to prepare himself for the month of Ramadan. And in fact, as we know that the month of Ramadan nowadays is coming in the days of summer. So it's a very good idea to taste those long fasts before the arrival of the month of Ramadan so your body is physically prepared. Otherwise, what happens is, as soon as a person goes into the month of Ramadan, and then he's starting to fast for those 16, 17 hours a day, first of all, he thinks to himself, what the fast is so long, any minute or any second I get, I need to rest, so I don't dehydrate. Or I don't overface, you know, overload myself with so much. So the month of Ramadan, from the beginning day, it has been just spent to maintain your physical body, whereas the month of Ramadan is there to prepare our spirituality for the next 11 months. And that has been neglected. Due to the fact that an individual thinks that physically he is very feeble to continue those long fasts. So let's start in those mini naps, and then trying to get those, because the nights are short, the days are long. And then we have the taraweeh prayer, and then everything else adds up. So of course, there is a lot of activities that happens in the month of Ramadan, in the life of a believer, which doesn't happen in any other months. And when your body is not used to it, it becomes difficult for an individual to bear it. So this is one of the lessons as the month of Sha'ban will be starting, from this Sunday, insha'Allah. So let's try to start this month with a very positive approach, physically preparing us for the blessed month of Ramadan by doing extra and optional fast, as long as praying the extra raka'ah of, of nafil, of, of, of the optional prayers, so a person is also used to standing in longer time in salah and because that becomes a habit when a qari when the reciter he lengthens the the taraweeh prayer that becomes a problem for us so we try to look for a masjid where have you know where is only allahu akbar where is only allahu akbar meaning we time it okay this masjid they finish taraweeh prayer in 45 minutes and that one does it in an hour. So I'll go to the one which does it in 45 minutes instead of the hour, because that's a shorter one. So we won't have to do that if we have prepared ourselves physically in regards to standing in those long prayers, because the, one of the main aspects of the month of Ramadan is to stand in prayer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after fasting, من صام رمضان ومن قام رمضان The one who has fasted in the month of Ramadan and those stand up in prayers at night during the month of Ramadan. And there are great rewards for them. So take this opportunity as the month of Sha'ban will be starting to get ourselves ready, inshaAllah. Now in connection to the second point that I had mentioned, first of all, Respect towards mother or parents are there and the teachings of Islam are great. The teachings of Islam has emphasized on this aspect. In fact, amongst the individuals that you show or that you owe responsibility or you have to show your responsibility towards, the first and foremost is the individuals or, or, or the parents of an individual, of a person. And that should not be only in the mind of a person once a year when those days or when Mother's Day come. 
in fact it should be at all time now of course we have many children many youngsters many youth in the gathering as well as many parents and amongst those parents are those whose parents are alive and their parents are not alive so those amongst us whose parents are not alive may Allah azza wa jal grant them a great jannah inshallah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make uh, the situations of, of the hereafter easy for them amin ya rabbal alameen now as for those that the parents are still living this is a great opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to serve them and to get their blessings now many of times this subject is talked about 50% of serving towards parents has to do with the service of parents towards their children 50% of an individual's service the behavior that he would show towards his parents has to do the way that the parents had treated him while he was small or while he was growing up. And many of times when we talk about this, the second part is always neglected. Because as a responsible individual, responsibilities of different relationships, that was the second, third point which was connected with the second point that I wanted to talk about. It's a great responsibility on the shoulder of every individual. And in fact, the future lies on this. So those who come after you, either they will be better than you, or worse than you because of you. Those who come after you, meaning your offspring, your children, Either they will be better than you or worse than you because of you. Once an individual brought his son to the court of Umar radiallahu anhu. And the father complained that this son of mine is very disrespectful. He doesn't respect me. He doesn't give me the respect that Allah has ordered for him to give. Neither he takes care of me. So Umar radiallahu anhu looked at the son and he said to him, What kind of individual you are? Don't you have the fear of the torment and the punishment of Allah coming down upon you? Don't you know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said about serving the parents this, 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 this? Now of course, Allah mentions in the Qur'an, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah has given you two orders. Number one is to worship Allah, and number two is to serve your parents. And then after that, other relationships come in. So حقوق الله and حقوق العباد, the first thing is the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is you're supposed to worship Him and do not associate any partners with Him. When it comes to حقوق العباد, which is the rights of people, the first and foremost is serving the parents. So all of that, Umar radiallahu anhu explained. So this individual was listening to Umar radiallahu anhu, and after Umar radiallahu anhu finished, he said, Ya Amir al mumineen I have a question. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, okay, go ahead, what's your question? He said, MashaAllah, you gave me a big lecture about serving the parents and so on and so forth. But I would like to ask you a question that Sharia, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has he not given any prescription, any type of advice, any type of hadith in regards to the rights of children? The rights of children. There is nothing that has been said about children, that how they should be treated. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, yes. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ وُلِدَ لَهُ وَلَدٌ 
the person who has a child in his house allah gave him a good a, a gift of a, of, 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 of a of a child of a baby falyuhsin ismahu he should give him a good name and before that the source of this child coming into existence he should think about who he is bringing in the house that's the responsibility because that individual that comes in the house which is the wife she is going to be the mother of that child many of times many of times you know when we have the nikah procedure here so there is a premarital counseling that takes place before the actual nikah to give an understanding that how the relationship to take place and of course this is two individuals from different background different mind different understanding different likes and hates they are coming together and they are going to live under one roof so there are going to be differences of opinion there are going to be clashes in opinion the problem is not the differences of opinion the problem is how to maintain the peace the mind uh, the to take individuals out from stress at the time when this situation takes place and i always give this example a great pilot is not the one who knows how to fly the plane very good a great pilot is that individual who knows how to maintain the peace of the cabin at the time of turbulence a great pilot is not the one who flies the plane and there is no turbulence while the flight is going a great pilot is that individual who knows how to maintain and calm all the passengers at the time when the turbulence is happening if you maintain yourself or if you know how to do that then you have a, you have a successful career so when you are in the house you are you know your situation is not a great home is not where there are no differences of opinion a great home is that home that they are able to live happily and respect each other's opinion respect one another so anyhow umar radiyallahu anhu told this individual before that make sure that your father brings you a good mother in the house so many of times there is a relationship between a man and a woman a boy and a girl and they like to, they happen to like each other so they want to get married and of course both of them they like each other and they want to get married now immediately after marriage there are demands from the men that you should do this and you should not do this for example the common fight the common argument is the sister she was not wearing hijab before marriage and after marriage within one night or within one day now you should wear hijab now you should wear hijab now of course i'm not going to go into the detail of it is it is you know fard or it is wajib or it is i'm just giving you an example now a day one day ago before she was not your wife she never wore a hijab now, neither i'm encouraging people not to wear hijab you know mashallah those who are doing may allah azza wa give them steadfastness but i'm just giving you an example a day before the marriage she was the same woman she had the same habits she had the same things now if you wanted to do this you should have worked it out before even getting into marriage before even getting into that wedlock and many of the arguments that happen is because of that after marriage now there are different things those needs to be sorted out before and if the mentality doesn't meant then of course you know allah azza wa jal has made other options available you're not mandatory to go and get married to this girl so anyhow that needs to take place because the relationship the upbringing of children has to be or they have a great responsibility amongst parents that their mentality should meet they have a greater understanding amongst themselves otherwise the future of the children is not bright you know there is a joke 
that the father, the son goes to the father, that, you know, where did we come from? Where did we come from? The father says, well, we came from Adam alayhi salam, he is the father, and then after that we are all his children. The son goes to the mother, where, where did we come from? The mother says, we've evolved. So the son goes back to the father and he says, well, you told me we came from Adam, and the mother is saying we've evolved. So the father says, well, I only told you where my part of the family came from. I only told you where my part of the family came from. <laughs> so that understanding, this statement has to match. It's not that one is giving the other and the other is giving the other. No, they both have to match. That's the bright future for children. The second thing Umar radiallahu anhu said to him was, فَلْيُحْسِنْ ismu." The Prophet sallallahu said that you give him a good name. A name, and there is a big issue with the names. You know, number one, when we get a children in the house, child in the house, the first and foremost thing is we need a unique name. So let's say if it's a girl, and we offer a name Aisha. Oh, but you know my 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 uh, uh, my, my brother, his daughter is also named Aisha. So I don't want to keep Aisha. I don't want to keep because that's she, that's already one Aisha in the family. Or Khadija, no, there's already a Khadija in the family. I need a unique name. So we look for different names. And nowadays, may Allah forgive. May Allah forgive. The criteria of picking name is not from the names of Sahaba or the Prophets alayhim salatu wassalam. The criteria or names are being made by drama series or movies or players, or artists, music artists. These are the criteria, so that's a good name, that's a new name, so I'll, t I'll pick that. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the name has an effect in the character of a, of, of a child. The name has an effect in the character of a child. Now if you are thinking of someone whose real character ain't good, whose life is not upon the orders of Allah, and you are naming your child because she had that name or he had that name, then of course the installment of those characters will come in. These are spirituality that had nothing to do with physical life. They're, they're, they move around. Intentions, you know? Niyatul mu'mini khayrun min amali. Intention of a believer is greater than his action. So whatever intention you make or you are doing, that's the, that's the you know, effect you will see in their lives. So that's another problem when it comes to the matter of name. So you need a unique name which is not found so you start searching, you start searching, and the best place to search is, you already know that, Google. And with every name, with every name, a, a name which is not found, never been kept, first of all, you will find it in Islamic names, and number two, a common meaning you will find a beautiful flower. This is a common meaning, where that name doesn't exist. Neither it has a meaning to it, nor is a name. But they will just write a beautiful flower. I mean, there are tons of, of those things you'll find on the internet. So that's our search engine. We don't want to keep the names of Sahaba. We don't want to keep the names of Anbiya. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَحَبُّ الْأَسْمَاءِ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَعَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ The best name in the sight of Allah is Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. And then after that, you should keep the names of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam, the pious speed researchers, Sahaba radhwanullahi alayhi majma'in. So that never comes into the equation. So that's the second responsibility. وَيُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابِ إِذَا عَقَلْ Number three. Giving him the teachings of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
giving him the teachings of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he starts to understand. When he starts to understand. And Allah comes, Allah mentions in the Quran, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Give orders to your family to establish salah and be steadfast on it yourself. It can be phrased in a different way also. It can be phrased in a different way also. And that is, pray salah and give our orders to your family to pray also. وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا There is a great emphasized in this word of, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, that Allah mentions that in fact, your children being punctual of salah and other obligations of Allah depends on the way you are giving importance to salah and other obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wastabir alayha is giving that meaning. Whatever you do, this will go into their lives. Whatever importance you have, they will have those importance in their life. So, Abu Layth the Marqandi rahmatullah alayhi mentions that story. And he said that I heard this story from my father who heard it from the ulama of Samarqand. An individual came to one of the scholars of the city and he said, That my son, فَإِنَّهُ ضَرَبَنِي وَأَوْجَعَنِي He hits me and he punishes me. So the scholars, they're looking at each other. How is that, you know, how can that be? He hits you, your son beats you up. He plays a wrestling match with you. And he gives you, he punishes you. How is that possible? So they looked at each other after that, they asked a question to this, the father. He said to him, هَلْ تَعَلَّمْتَهُ Quran? Have you taught him the book of Allah? Have you taught him the manners that Quran teaches him? Have you gave him the upbringing what Allah has ordered to bring? Or what Allah has ordered to do? He says, no. He said, what did you taught him? I only teach him how to farm because he was a farmer. So the son has also become a farmer. So one of the scholars said to him, he said, well, I know why, you, why your son beats you up. He says, why? Because when he wakes up in the morning, neither he prays, nor he recites the Quran, neither he has anything to do with Allah. So he just gets his belongings together and he gets onto his donkey and he has his dog behind him and he's going into his farming land and on the way you say and you come and you say something he thinks you're a cow so he just hits you he thinks you're a cow you should be thanking you should be thankful to Allah that he did not chop your head off you should be thankful to Allah that he didn't chop your head off so that's إِذَا aqal. When he has that understanding, And the responsibility is to make him get married at the time when he reaches the age. When he reaches that understanding, when he reaches the responsibility. Now this is a very lengthy discussion. This is a very lengthy discussion because the marriage itself, you know, in different cultures, they have different things. Different criteria have been fixed. Then when will the son get married? Has to meet this, 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 this criteria. So when it comes to the matter of this, as I mentioned earlier, 50% of the behavior of the respect of parents lies on the upbringing of the way you have brought them up. And that's how it is. In fact, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the way you treat your parents, your children will treat you. Your parents, your children will treat you the same way. So this is the teaching that we need to understand. 
Because we have, now there are responsibilities on both sides. And in fact, the responsibility is something which every individual will be asked on the Day of Judgment. Now many of times we, we neglect or we forget to understand that the responsibility that we owe, we owe to those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us responsible of, we forget to fulfill those. And in fact, we only remember the part that the responsibilities of other people that they owe us. So this is my responsibility and you should be mindful of this. And this is my responsibility and you should be mindful of this. If every individual understands their responsibility and they're trying to fulfill it, then the world will become a better place. Instead of every individual demanding of their own responsibility that I should be treated this way, or I should be done this way, or I should be made this way. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that, because, you know, of course the summer is coming. And now those children that are graduating from high school, they have issues, you know, the prom dates and everything else that will come into the package. You know, it's part of life, it needs to be mentioned, right? So all of that comes in and comes in the package. How to deal with those situations as a parent? Now summer is coming, the children, of course, they need attention. Otherwise, unfortunately, other things have taken that place. Other things have taken that place. So try, if we can, in any way, to give attention. Because at this current junction, as your children are growing up, and that includes myself, the greatest gift that you can give to your child is your time. The greatest gift you can give to your child is your time. Is to spend time with him. Before they become independent and then they no longer want you to be with them. Because they reach to that stage where they don't feel comfortable being with the father. Where they don't feel comfortable being with the mother. They more feel comfortable being with their, with their friends or someone else. Or maybe with an iPad or iPhone or whatever. So let's, let's, let's use the, this, this time and try to make the best out of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. And may Allah azza wa jal make us among those who are willing, who are fulfilling the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying to maintain the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa li sa'ali muslimina fa astaghfiru inna wa ghafuru rahim. Inshallah, if the brothers maintaining their roles, can you move forward a little bit? Because there are brothers outside, um, they're praying outside so they can find some space, inshallah. Make sure you maintain the roles, inshallah, as you move forward. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmed, who wants to hear who wants to fear who wants to be lahi in Shiruri and Fusina. May you have the lahu fellam of the lella, who may you the little fellam tajid the lahu wali and Mushida. What shall we la ilaha illa law who had the hula sharika, who was shall the one message the now Molana, Mohammed and Abdu who were so. Salavat Allah, he alay, he wa ala, he was a happy, he was Baraka was selling at the sleeve and Kathir and Kathira. A mabad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة المقربين خصوصا على خير البشر بعد الأنبياء بالتحقيق من المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق صاحب رسول الله في الغار رضي الله عنه وعلى مزين من برب المحرام من المؤمن سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه وعلى كامل الحياء والإيمان من المؤمن سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه وعلى مظهر العجائب والغرائب من المؤمن سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه وعلى ستة الباقة من العشرة المبشرة وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله عليه أجمعين I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful salutations upon the children of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his companions, his family members and those who follow the footsteps until the Day of Judgment. Respected brothers and sisters, as we are getting closer to the blessed month of Ramadan, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the opportunity and the ability to take maximum benefit from it and give us the opportunity, the ability to prepare for this arrival of the month of Ramadan so we can take maximum benefit. And also, as we, uh, this weekend is the Mother's Day, so inshallah, let's try to make this habit of building that relationship with our, with our parents and the same way the parents building that relationship with their children. Because this is the, uh, the, the life, the, the anxieties and issues of life have been removed if this relationship is healthy. And if there is an issue in this relationship both ways, then in fact you can be a millionaire and live, live in a big, very, very big palace. You won't enjoy your life. And if your relationship is healthy, you can be a very poor person living in a hut, but you will enjoy the life that Allah has given you. Because this gives you an inf- the inside comfort. And this is why Rasul Sallallahu Allah Azza wa Jal has made uh, this uh, uh, dua for believers to ask in the Quran that, Oh Allah, make us, make our children the coolness of our eyes and give us that understanding amongst, amongst the children and the parents that they can live this life happily and with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make this dua on this blessed day of Jum'ah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever problems and issues that we are having in our families, in our relationship, may Allah remove all of them. Our children make them obedience to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, whatever uh, shortcomings we had as being a parent towards we were not able to fulfill, may Allah forgive and do not make those shortcomings as a source of bringing problems in our life. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our future and our, our family better, inshallah.